Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Barry Chapel coming to you live from a very hot Hollywood, California, home of Primetime Shopping Network. Do I have a show tonight? Is this a show? Patty, is this a show? It's a show. I have five of the most amazing Oleg Javetans you've ever seen. Absolutely stunning. Yeah, show them that big wide shot. Oh, you already did. There you go. Ah. Yeah, we got a great show. I have only five. I wish I had more. Oleg Javetin is a master graduate of the Surikov. And I was talking with Oleg before the show when he dropped off this work. I was worried he was dead because he lives. He, his phone apparently drowned. Somehow somebody put his phone under water. And I kept texting him, what time are you going to be here? And I didn't hear from him for two days. I'm going, ah, he was talking about going to the desert. Now he's dead. And it's Ashley's fault. Yeah. I got a great show tonight, so I hope you stick with me. I got five amazing Oleg Javetin, master graduate of the Surikov. And I'll tell you what, I want to start out with... Uh, I got five Schofields left, got a few Azulays. Do you know whose birthday it was yesterday, Wilson? A guy you try and em emulate. He's on the easel right there. It's Mr. Mick Jagger to you, Ashley. You can't just call him Mick. Is it all right if she calls him Mick? No. Wilson's shaking his head. This is a polymorph by Zach's. See, there he is, 80-year-old Mick Jagger. He's still alive, and his guitarist is still alive. Look at that. So what a polymorph is, is Zax, a very unique street artist. He came up with this polymorph. And if you look at it on the back, it's a unique three-dimensional polymorph original. Take a look at that. You got the little, what do you call that? Like, it, look at Zach's name. What do you call that when it goes that color? Yeah, I can't think of the name either. What is the name of that? Say it again. Hologram. Yeah. You see how quick Wilson got it? You know why Wilson got it? What was the last part of it? Graham. <laughs> so, folks, Zax was just auctioned off in L.A. What was the auction house name in L.A.? Julian's. Julian's. And one of his pieces went for over $10,000. And I just want to show you that again because this is a unique one of a kind. It is signed by Zach's. It is just absolutely beautiful. He's got more and more major auction houses handling his work. And seeing how yesterday was Mick Jagger's birthday. His 80th birthday. Tell you what. Retail on a Zach's Polymorph original signed with the hologram. I'll tell you what, I think it's right around 2,900 to 3,200. And the item number on this is... BC2657. And here's what I can do. Oh. He just turned 80, which means he was 79. So let's combine that $780 to open. See what I'm doing here, Patty? 
because I don't have a clue. <laughs> but yeah, 780 to open, $50 increments once we get the open. Now, Patty was lecturing me before the show. She had a very good point. I have five Michael Schofields left. And she says, don't wait till dish. Don't wait to this. Don't be a little baby, Barry. Well, I didn't cry like that. I did say baby. Uh, no open yet on the Zax polymorph of Mick Jagger. All right, I'm going to move that aside. Here's what I'm going to do. Because I don't want to be a baby. I am going to work a de I am going to work a deal of deals here. Ashley, can you put those Schofields up one at a time? I got five of them. There's four right there and one there. No, three there and two there. Uh, now, folks, here's what I'm going to do. I got a deal for you. Yeah. Did you try and hide that behind my Oleg? We, we all saw you hide that behind the Oleg. What if somebody calls for it? I'll know right where it is. Okay. 2667. Two, six, six, Take a look at this. This is a Michael Schofield original. He is 76 years old. And that's what he does better than anybody. He was an official PGA golf artist, Michael Schofield. Now you feel guilty. You're going to take <laughs> Mick and put him back over there. I can tell. Oh, he can stay right there. What if Mick doesn't want to be back? Mick does not like being backstage. Mick is a performer. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> All right, so here's what I'm going to do, folks. I want to show you all five because I got an idea. I want to work a deal that only all my loyal Internet customers, because right now I'm only on the Internet. You know what I'm talking about, Wilson, that thing Al Gore invented? 2664. That is a hard painting for Schofield to paint. Look at those blues. Look at those whites. Titanium white. Look at that. Royal blues. What was the atom number on this one? 2664. Here is when Michael Schofield was selling work at Hubs Historical. Some of his paintings went for 48000 this is 25 years ago. But Michael Schofield is one of the best known landscape artists of all time. Millions of his posters have been sold. Look, that is amazing. So that is Schofield number two. All right. I got a deal. I'm going to craft a deal. The one you're looking at right there was done, was done in 07. That is one of the brightest Schofields I've ever seen. Brightness of peace. Now, Ashley, I'm thinking. I make a deal. For my loyal, loyal customers, and throw something else in. Okay, let's show them the remaining two. A seascape. Between the breaks? 
Have you ever swam in the ocean? Oh, yeah, I was just in the ocean on Friday. Did you go above your knees? What do you mean? Did you walk out? To I dove in. <laughs> you I dove in. in. Yeah, I swam in the ocean. All right. Da, 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 I'm da, in the ocean da, no, 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 <laughs> yeah, no, no. Yeah, not see any sharks. No, it's all right. But I did see a lot of crabs. A lot of what? Crabs, sand crabs. Hang on a second. What did you say about getting crabs in the ocean? What did you do? <laughs> no. Oh, you saw sand crabs. <laughs> oh, my bad. Like, dug them in. I don't eat sand crabs. I don't eat them either. I just look at them. So this poor little sand crab, who has a very short life compared to humans, <laughs> is walking around like on SpongeBob. He's got something to do, and this humanoid picks the crab up. Well, I had a bucket. And you put him in a bucket. <laughs> then you pick him up and go, ah. You terrified the poor crab. I also found this really, really weird worm, sandworm. Have you ever seen a sandworm? Not lately. <laughs> it was something else. Really? Do you, you like sandworms? No. Oh, because you could be a sand orb worm farmer. Oh. Yeah. I'll bet there's some wear. Wait, anyway. Let's show the last one because I got an idea. It's going to be a secret off the air. Oh my God! <laughs> you had to do that, well, didn't yeah. you? I saved it till the end. Oh my God, that's beautiful. Too bad the painting's possessed now. <laughs> yeah. You ever see The Exorcist, Wilson? I'm still scared of Linda Blair. I could meet her in an airport, and I go, oh, <laughs> run. I got a deal here, Ashley. And I'm thinking, and I have five of those, and I have one, two, three, four, five original watercolors left, Ashley. And I'm going to give people their choice. Yeah, their choice of which watercolor they want. And which original, because I'm going to give you a price that is unbelievable. This is an off-the-air special. Let me get my calculator out. Let me use my Jethro Bodine skills here. That's from the Beverly Hillbillies. My problem is I can't even find my calculator. No, there it is. Okay. Oh my goodness. And they're getting the watercolor. Folks. Now hang on, hang on, hang on. That's not right. So it's this, right, Ashley? It's, yeah. And if I did like one. Yeah. Oh. No, 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 no. No one's going to be happy with that. What would be a great price for an original Schofield? Even though he has sold paintings for forty and fifty and sixty thousand, Ashley, here's what I'm going to do. I know a lot of people pay two and three thousand. They should. All right. Let me just do some more Jethro Bodine mathematics. All right. All right.
I. Here is the price, Ashley. This is too cheap. We have auctioned those watercolors. They've gone for two and three thousand. All right. I can't even say this on the air. Yeah, and they get a watercolor. Got it. They get an original watercolor. Camera two. I can't show this. I can't even say it. If you call in, Ashley will tell the other operators. And it is a price where you get one of my five watercolors plus one of my fine original oil on canvas. Take a look at the five here. I have five original Michael Schofields. The price is so, oh, that's the one. Your eye just goes to it. That would sell for 4,500. If I, if I waited till Dish Network started zero, $200 increments, hey, it'd be at 4,000 4, or 5,000. I just gave a price. It's less than five, four, three, two thousand. It's so cheap. You got to call one of our operators. If you're a regular customer, if you're a new customer, you just call us. It's a price out of Michael Schofield Original and a watercolor. And the first person that buys the Schofield gets to choose one, which of the five watercolors he wants. I can tell someone's going to call and ask that price. I can't even usually get them for that price. Who's inquiring from you, Ashley? Oh, it's cheap price. It's less than 1500 It's less than 1400 it's less than 1300 It's less than 1200 This is a special internet only. It's less than 1100 Which one? Top one on the easel. All right. Snow White Dreams. Is it sold? Which one do they want? Yeah, pick, this top one appears to be sold, but I got four more, Wilson. This, this. Oh. Is this sold? No. Okay, well, whoever, and, and Ashley, the minute somebody buys one, the first customer to buy one gets his choice of the five watercolors I have left. Which one would they like, Juliet? The yellow one right there? You tell them the price? Did they take it? Well, this is a one-time only price, I mean... And yes, you get whoever buys. I have five original watercolors by Michael Schofield. You get to pick which one you want. Oh, this is a special price. It's less than twelve hundred, less than eleven hundred. It's even less than $1,000. But this is an internet only special. And I uh, only have five original Schofields. I don't have any more coming. Michael Schofield is one of the most famous landscape artists. He was also a PGA golf artist.
He taught art. Wilson, how was your weekend? You're not going to comment on it, huh? I thought the shakes would be over by now, Wilson. You didn't? Hey, I'm proud of you. Which one do they want? Snow White Dream? This one? Is it this one, Patty? Yes, sir. Okay. That's a stunning piece. It's never been at this price. See, right now, I only have the internet. And 50, 40, four minutes, I end up. I get Dish Network. What do they say, Patty? Sold. Now, let's show them a. Uh, let's grab the five watercolors. They get to pick which watercolor they want. You get this, plus you're getting a watercolor. All right. Hang on. Yeah, let's show. I'll grab all five of the watercolors. Okay. So this is sold. And we're sending you a picture of the five watercolors. You give your first one. Now I have four Michael Schofields left. Yeah, they're on the web. Now, you know what keeps me going, Wilson? I know in a mere 36 minutes, I have Dish Network. <laughs> Folks, this is an unprecedented deal. It's less than $1,000, and you get to choose an original watercolor as well as your original oil on Canvas. Which one did she choose? Let me give them an example. Like, here is an original Schofield watercolor. Right there. Signed Schofield. Right there. And Michael Schofield, 2003 on the back so you're getting one heck of a deal on an original oil line canvas and i had five watercolors left now i have four watercolors left and nobody else on one of these michael schofields it's less than a thousand dollars oh look at that seascape and look at that bright one in yellow. These are amazing. I'm down to four Schofields. Because Patty told me. Patty set me straight before the show. He said, Barry, you got a lot of people watching you just on the internet. Give them the absolute best deal you can give them, or I'm going to come over there and kick you in your shin. You're right. She said, or I'm going to go kick Wilson in the shin again. Oh, that's the painting right there. Look at that. You know how difficult it is to make a monochromatic original based in orange and tangerine and have reflections like that? There are so few artists that could actually pull that off. And a guy that has sold for Hubs Historical. He is in the Smithsonian collection. Uh, Michael Schofield is in 
He's in the Arm and Hammer collection, isn't that right, Michael Schofield? Yeah. Oh, did somebody take that one? No, these are the ones that are left. Oh, these are the four that are left. You get an original for less than a thousand, plus you get an original watercolor. You're getting two Schofields for less than a thousand dollars. So give us a call. Yeah, he's, uh, he did a lot of work for Stephen J. Canal Productions. The Rockford Files. And you will watch old sitcoms from the late 70s, early 80s, 90s, and you'll see a landscape in the background. A lot of those were painted by Michael Schofield. I can't believe that one based in orange is still here. Right there. That's a hard painting to paint. There's a lot of people going, Barry, I love the concept, but I have black furniture, gray furniture, green furniture. I just don't have, I'm not like Wilson, I just don't have a ton of orange furniture. All right, last call on these. Where's the one landscape that we got? You see the landscape right at the bottom, yeah. Tra traditional landscape. That I am going to move. Uh-oh, then I'll start knocking everything down. Don't knock it down. Hey, I didn't. I didn't. Yet. Ooh. Yeah, I know what you're thinking, Wilson, and you're right. Uh, did you take that one? Yes. Yes. And so the, does he get that watercolor or? All right. So let him choose which of the. She's going to send the picture. You're messing up my set. I am down to three. Yes. All right, I'm down to three Schofields and three watercolors. Thank you. Wilson, you saw it. You're working as a cameraman. Ashley messed up my set, didn't she? Yeah, look at Wilson. Patty, look at Wilson when he says yes. Say yes like that to Patty. She messed it up. You messed up the set. What should her punishment be, Wilson? I can't do that. It's illegal. I can't flog her. Juliet, have you ever been flogged? Oh. I thought that's what you claimed in your. I thought when you divorced Romeo, you said he flogged you. Uh. Wilson in 1980, I saw the Pearson light in Pearson, Georgia. It was the strangest thing I ever saw. I went to the police station and told them. And so did the person with me. They didn't believe me. I said, well, do you want us to file a report? I said, not particularly. I just said it was one of the strangest things I ever saw. Out of nowhere, this light comes up. 
and it keeps coming closer and closer and closer and it gets like a foot in front of your car window and it starts changing in color and then it whoosh gone. And somebody said, well, you say that could be swamp gas. I said, well, that'd be the first time I... It's funny because I was at the dog park with Ginger yesterday and I met somebody from, I think he said, Milan, Georgia. Because I asked him, where's your accent from? He goes, Georgia. I said, I thought so. I said, I went to school in Georgia for five quarters. The way you go to school in Georgia. That's what he said to me. I said, Douglas, Georgia. Near Waycross. All right, folks, I am down to three Schofields. And you're thinking that's going to be 3,500, 4,000. At least, forget that, 2,800. But it's not 2,800. That's a winner. Look at that. Not 27, 26, 25, 24. It's not 2,000. It's not 19, 18, 17, 16, 1,500. It's not even 1,400, Patty. It's not 13. It's not 12. It's not a lot. It's not even a thousand dollars. And not only you get an oil on canvas, Schofield, you also get an original Michael Schofield watercolor. So you're getting two originals for under a thousand dollars. And that seascape, I did not do justice explaining it. Patty just left. What did you do to her, Wilson? Uh, I only have three left. I would definitely go for the one on the top. Wilson, show, show him that one on the top. And let me show it so you don't have any glare. Sh Shadow Creek. Is that without glare, Wilson? It's worse. How's that, Wilson? It's stunning. This is one of the nicest Michael Schofields. He is one of the greatest landscape artists ever. He, he's 76. He painted this in 03 or 02 or 09. He sighted on the front and the back, Shadow Creek. And now I got the glare. Hey, now. Ashley, what do you think the odds are I can rest this painting like this without it falling down? Yeah, that's that's a slim to none. What? Slim to none. Slim to none? Ye of little faith. Oh, Now there's a better chance me the whole, and all three will fall down. Okay. So, folks, last call. Oh, look at that. What's in that right there? I just noticed that. Look how he blended the colors right here, Wilson. All right. Well, thank you. I want to thank everybody. I gave you all a chance. I am down to three original oil on canvas by Michael Schofield and three watercolors. You get both an oil on canvas by legendary artist Michael Schofield and you get an original watercolor by Michael Schofield. And it's not 2,500, not 2,000, not 1,500, it's under $1,000. And they've never been that cheap, but Patty said, Barry, for your loyal customers, because you don't have dish, you do that, or I'm going to have to beat up Ashley again. Everything's true except the last part. 
Yeah, she said uh, you should charge more. No, she didn't. All right, I'm going to move this deal over because I have something else really cool. Oh, I'd be surprised if any are left, but I don't know if I I don't know if I can offer these prices on dish, but hey, you want to see something cool, Wilson? What is the item number on this one? Yes. Here is an 1885 Morgan dollar in Mint State 64. It is stunning that toning. What is it? 2677. Wilson, you should know what color green is that. That's Army Green, Wilson. You were in the Army, so you said. Look at that. That is, I love that Army Green toning. And look at that. Mint State 6.4 means, MS-60 means it's uncirculated. It goes all the way from MS-60 to MS-70, but there's never been a Morgan Dollar graded MS-70. There's been an MS69 plus star, all that, but look at that. Oh, that's stunning. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Ashley, oh, look at that. I want to get this in the light just right. What? I think I can. I think I can. There we go. Oh, there it is. Tell you what I'm going to auction this. $450 to open. $50 increments once we get the open. That's a solid MS64. MS65 becomes gem brilliant uncirculated. This coin was minted in uh, Philadelphia. 1885, 100, 1985 would be 100, 2000 would be 115, 138 years ago, Wilson. Look at that toning. That is beauty. Look at that. Touch of proof likeness, but not enough to call it that. Now look at the reverse. If you look between the D and O and dollar at the bottom, if it wasn't Philadelphia, there'd be a mint mark there like S for San Francisco, CC for Carson City, D for Denver. But there's no mint mark, which means it was struck at the Philadelphia Mint. So that is coin. That's one coin. And here, it's got some very unique coffee color toning. And it's been cacked. That's what you need to have happen to you, Wilson. This one right here. Yeah. Olive drab, thank you. Well, this has been cacked, Wilson. A cack coin means it's uh, it's another grading service that takes and looks at what NGC did, and if they agree and say that is accurately graded, they put their little hologram sticker on it. This is 1923 silver, one dollar. Men's state 6-3, basically choice uncirculated, and it's got this coffee color toning and cacking, and look at the reverse. This was called the peace dollar. To commemorate the end of World War I, the war to end all wars. 
Don't get me going about Woodrow Wilson, Wilson. <laughs> Were you related to Woodrow Wilson, Wilson? He ran on not keeping us out of World War I, wins the election, first thing he does, sends us to World War I. So, on this, 235 on the coffee colored toning. So I have two toned, one's a Morgan, one's a Peace Dollar. Yeah, I got some platinum, I got some gold. Got some azulays. Any interest, give us a call. I got 17 minutes till Dish Network. Now. I miss little Juanita. I, I like your dog. She came up to me. She was playing with me the whole show. How much for the peace dollar? Uh, two. What did I say on the peace dollar? Two th make it 235. So Juanita doesn't go up to Jack? Yeah, I like that Juanita just came up here. Uh, well, this is a Guillaume Ajoule right here. Take a look at this. I don't have a number on it. You do? Is it? What is it? Two six five five. Now, what is the name of this piece? Because this is an amazing addition. This is number thirteen of thirty. La Ar. Say it again. La Arlachino. Say it again. Larchino, what did you say? Say it loudly, Ashley. You do and you clean it up. I'm not going to have anything like that in this studio. <laughs> All right. Um, I like the black and white. It was an etching. The way you can tell it's an etching is by the heavy embossing mark. When a copper plate was scribed by Guillaume Agile. He is the youngest living artist to ever be accepted in the archival collection of the Louvre, otherwise known as the Bibliothèque Nationale. Guillaume Agile, if you go down to the Ronald Reagan Museum in Simi Valley, there is a piece called um, uh, Encounters that he had acquired from Guillaume Agile. Guillaume Agile is in so many museums. He was collected by the Baron Robert de Rothschild. And you are looking at what does that say for the retail there? 5200. Even my glasses I can't read it, Wilson. I gotta be like that movie in uh, my cousin's video. Do you think, Barry, you need thicker glasses? <laughs> All right, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. Ashley, what did I pay for this? Oh, it's a beautiful piece. And I'm gonna put a piece of plexi in it. It's gorgeous. Tell you what I'm gonna do. Hope my Agile collector's out of there. They're, he only did 30 etchings of this. 
you're talking about scribing the plate, doing all that for an addition of only 30. That's why the Print World guide price is 5,200, because he only did 30 of them. Very rare, I'll tell you what. $750 to open, $50 increments. You know, Guillaume, this is one of my favorite pieces he did. The late, he did a piece called Buster Keaton, who was one of the founders of the silent film age. And here's one on eBay, 9,500. Seven fifty is pretty cheap. Why'd you let me do that, Ashley? I don't know. Mic off because I put too many pieces of nicotine gum in my mouth at one time. So if you hear the mic go down, there's not like we're talking here. It's a I put three pieces in at the same time. 12 milligrams of nicotine is racing towards my blood system. Like it. <laughs> All right. Wilson, do you see the piece below that? Ashley, can you put this? What's one of a kind? You no. Are. <laughs> no. That is an original drawing by Guillaume Agelet. That is a study for an edition he was working on. That's like the Buster Keaton piece. That they he, they that eBay wanted ninety five hundred two six five two and can they see it well enough? I mean, can you close the iris? Yeah, that's it. It's really good. It's really good. And here is the youngest living artist ever accepted in the permanent archival collection of the Louvre. He was collected by President Ronald Reagan. He was collected by the late President of Egypt, Anwar Sadat, and President of Israel, Yitzhak Novin. That's pretty amazing. We can sell both sides like that, Wilson. Jerry Lewis wrote him a letter thanking him. Jane, is it Gardner or Gardner? Gardner. G-A-R-N-E-R. Gardner. Okay, was a, a collector, Scott Hamilton, the gold medalist. <laughs> You're talking about $4,500 because this is not the Marquette to the one they chose for the edition, but this is one that they were thinking, I got to do an edition like this. And... And what was the name of the edition right there, Ashley? I can't read. A-Z-T. A-Z-A-T. Asud means study for A-Z-A-T. And I'll tell you what, retail, it's got to be 4500 or more. I mean, I got, I've seen original Ashley's go for... So much money, yeah, retail, 4,500. Tell you what, what do you think I should do? Patty, I'm gonna judge everything I know about you by this one answer. If it's successful, 
you bit you get to be queen for a day if it's wrong you got to walk the plank what kind of increments would you do on study for AZA something Well, if that is the increments you want, Patty, you should have used your index finger. Now, I'm not going to do that, but I'll tell you what, Ashley is going to leave a mark. This is going to be a Tommy Boy auction. You ever see Tommy Boy? Yeah. <laughs> He's going to leave a mark. Started zero, $200 increments. Yeah. I got a Buster Keaton, 9,500. I got other comps for that much, some slightly less, some slightly more. That's an original drawing for, for an addition he is working on or was working on. That is an original Azule. Youngest living artist to ever be accepted in the Bibliothèque Nationale, the permanent archival collection of the Louvre. Guillaume Agile was born in Casablanca, Morocco, immigrated to France. From France, immigrated to the United States. And this is a one of a, he never used a ruler in his life. He can draw with the best of them. And that would have been a deal. That would have been so cheap. No. Open. Once. No. Open twice. So at this point on this particular auction, Wilson, I've gone no open once, no open twice. Does it seem a little hopeless? A little like uh, he's really going to jump. I mean, fair and final no open. Do you have anybody? Is someone calling you, Ashley? No. All right, let me move. Yes, how much was it? Yeah, this one is. All right, you have 200. Thank you. We're at 200, 400, thank you. Now, Wilson, I need you to get the shot of your lifetime on this. And I'm going to quote something out of the Johnny Cash movie. Wilson, you got one chance, one shot, before you're laying in the gutter turning into dirt. And that's a shot you're going to give me as Wilson's best shot to show everybody in the world how good of a cameraman Wilson is? Or can you do something real? That's a pretty good camera shot, Wilson. All right, $400 going once. Four, huh, this is cheap, $400 going twice. Fair. Was that Ashley making the UFO sound? All in, all said, that sold too cheap. That went way too cheap. 
So thank you. Who got that? Okay. What can I help people with next? Ah, uh, I'll tell you what I could do. Pull, pull, yeah, uh, no, we're, we're down to two, right? What? Uh, I put them up real fast. Because I, I want to do this before we get on Dish Network. Good sound effects. That was her sound effects, Wilson, for speed. <laughs> yes. Next time I hear that, you know what I'm going to be thinking, Wilson? Here comes the flash. Now, I lowered these three Schofields for my internet only portion down to the point I'm probably losing money. Not 2,500, not 2,000, not 1,500. Not 14, 13, 12, 11, less a thousand dollars, less than a thousand dollars, and you get an original watercolor too. So you're getting an oil on canvas and a watercolor. Getting two Schofields for under a thousand dollars. And the one in the middle right there, Wilson, that should have been gone so quick. That should have flown out of here. That should have, uh, somebody should have come walking in this studio like Steve Martin in The Jerk, going, all I need in this world is my dog, and I cannot say his name, and this Schofield. Less than $1,000 each, call the phone bank, that's the good news. Bad news is I only have two and a half minutes left. Say what, Juliet? That's less than a thousand. I'm starting to see why Romeo left you. Wilson, he didn't just leave her. He ran like a... <laughs> Look at the, between the breakers right there. All right, I have my original. I got one minute. Two six six five. It's less than a thousand dollars. But Wilson, I have like twenty five seconds. Do you have an atomic clock, Wilson? How do you know it's really an atomic clock? And how could someone disprove you? Well, folks, let me go to camera two. Matt, am I on dish yet? Ten seconds. Well. All right, thank you. Hello, Dish Network. Tonight is an Oleg Javetin extravaganza. And I wish I had more. I can't give more. Oleg, I got all I could, which is five. And I'll tell you all about Oleg here in a minute. But I just hope everybody's having a great Wednesday. And, uh, oh, look at those Oleg's. You know, folks, this is a special show. Oleg Javetin, 
uh, was born, he got his first uh, degree in art when he was like 16 and a half, 17. Uh, he was born in Uzbekistan. Wilson, can you spell Uzbekistan backwards real fast? Well, how are you going to get citizenship there? No, Oleg Javetin was born in Uzbekistan, got his first college degree, then applied because Uzbekistan at the time was a satellite country to the Soviet Union. He applied to the Moscow Academy of Fine Art, otherwise known as the Surikov, possibly the most difficult art school on the planet. To date, and I don't know if this is updated yet, but I, and this could be five, 10, 12, eight years old. To date, there's only been one American that has ever graduated uh, from the Surikov in Moscow. So one of the toughest schools on the planet. And I want to show you something about Oleg because he is one of the most interesting individuals that's a Tommy Boy moment. That will leave a mark. Now, I'm going to show you a few pictures here. Wilson, I am going to put this Oleg up for a second. This is one of the coolest Oleg's I've ever seen. Amazing woman. This is oil on canvas. Here's the first time I tracked Oleg down. December 4th, 2006. I have been buying the clothes out because a company called Collector's Editions uh, which eventually a friend of mine bought out, um, kept lying to me. He said, oh, he's back in Moscow. He's in Russia. He doesn't live in America. And he lived in L.A. And I tracked him down. And we've been doing business ever since. So that's the first time I met him. Here is Olga about a year and a half ago. My dog Ginger took to him. That's at my apartment. He brought some paintings in. That's a David Linton behind him that I won't part with. David Linton died a few years ago. That's what the Surikov looks like in Moscow. It's the, the Moscow Academy of Fine Art, otherwise known as the Surikov. Now, this has nothing to do with the presentation, Wilson, but this is me in Russia in St. Petersburg at their equivalent of a Costco. Look how skinny I was. Here's me getting cute at a Surica at the Costco. Look at that, I'm holding up a picture of Vladimir Putin, which you could buy for 69 rubles, which is not that much money. Now, Oleg Javetin, a master graduate of Surikov, here's a piece on art brokerage. Oleg Javetin, untitled 2006. Mixed media, which means it's oil on canvas and hand laid gold, more than one medium. Asking price 95000 our best offer, retail 104000 He was one of the top artists for a company called Collector's Editions. They brought him over from Moscow. He has both Russian citizenship and American citizenship he was talking to jack the owner about it today saying telling him i had to learn english i had to pass a history uh, 
uh, test. I had to learn about representative government. I had to be able to speak fluent English, and he's very proud of that. Here is a piece, and let me get the date right. It was sold in 2011. Asking price was $44,800. It's called Sailor's Heart. It's a larger piece. It was one of the most important. It's 40 by 40. Everybody, when they thought of Oleg, they thought of Sailor's Heart because that is his style, using geometrical shapes to create romantic uh, Russian Romanticism. And here's the price increased. Two years later, it was selling for 95000 on our brokerage. Here is Man and Woman, 1997, asking price $68,800. I think in 2004 or 5, Oleg sold 12 paintings himself, each painting for over $100,000 U.S. Now, what Oleg did is he took different geometrical shapes and a pinpoint idea of coloring, just perfect. And he blended the different colors with the different shapes to convey a feeling, to say something. That's what real art is supposed to do. This is Amazing Woman. One of my favorite paintings ever painted was by Edward Hopper. It's called Nighthawks at the Cafe. A couple people, one smoking, one drinking a cup of coffee in this Chicago diner late at night. You could feel the mist coming off of the boiling of the coffee, the steam from the tea. With Oleg, you can feel the emotion. That is why he is one of the most important artists I have ever met in my life. So, this is Oleg number one. I only have five. I hope you're out there because a painting like this, in my humble opinion, it's only my opinion, you only can get one shot at. This is a large painting. It's beautiful. And he signs it on the front and the back. Oleg Javetin. Now, 2674. If I had to give this a retail value, I'd say 85000 I'm not going to charge anywhere near that because I have been working with Oleg directly since 2005, since 2006, when I chased him down December 4th, 2006. That is stunning. You know, right when COVID hit, Oleg went back to Moscow and he had to, about four months later, he called me up and said, help me get me, get him out of Moscow. Not that he couldn't get out, but with COVID and the different flights, he needed a little bit of help. He went back there because he was a graduate of the Surikov. He teamed up with a lady that graduated two years later and they were getting commissions of a quarter of a million dollars. That's how well Oleg and his friend that graduated from the Surikov are known. He is an amazing artist. Ashley, can you help gently? Uh, what I'm gonna do is I am gonna, I'm gonna swap places. Tension. And I wanna show you something. Even though, look at, look at it. Oleg picks his own closest to 
Soviet canvas, canvas you can find. Look at that. Now Oleg said, what would a person feel like if they are going to a psychotherapist? And he wanted to call this, he was telling us, he thought about calling it the shrink. But he didn't call it that. Using his geometrical shapes, he's trying to convey the emotions that this person would have sitting across from their psychiatrist. Here is the patient. No, hang on. Which one is which one's the patient? She's the patient, and there's the shrink. He's got that Russian cap of knowledge that you see uh, if you ever get to Russia, which is, if you ever get to St. Petersburg, most amazing place. But look at this. He has used every geometrical shape that I can name. Planes, squares, circles, triangles. Look at that. Boxes, rectangles. And look how he casts his shadow over that lady's face as she is hopefully watching her problems dissipate or be shrunk as Oleg was thinking. Amazing. Retail, 75000 I'm not going to charge anywhere near that. I just want to show you the greatest Oleg Javetans I have ever had. They are five stunning paintings. Ashley, I am going to put this one up next. Ooh. This one is beyond belief. In the mind. Now whose mind is it in? This girl, these two girls are in his mind. He's probably, is he trying to make a decision? Is he comparing or is he just in love with both of them? Here's the man's face and mind. There's the man's eye. There's the man's ear. There is the man's eyelash, nose, and lips, all using different geometrical shapes. Look at that. Triangles, squares. Look at that. Look at the eye looking down from the mind. Oleg was telling us this, he said, took a long time how he textured the canvas here, and how he could best get you, the viewer, to look at this every time and see something different. Yeah, Ashley, can you do me a favor here? Let me, let's move that one. I don't want a clash. Yeah, let's, let's move that one away for now, yeah. Because I want you to see this by itself. This is in the mind. Two six seven three. It's a large painting, thirty six by forty eight. Yeah, let's move. Well, we already showed that, right? Yeah. Look at that. He is putting these two girls in the mind of this person. And how can you show that, Wilson? You talk about Russian Romanticism. You talk about the Surikov, named after um, Vasily Ivanov. Surikov, who painted these big, grandiose battle scenes, and 
Ole goes to school there, gets his master's degree, and he's challenged himself only using geometrical shapes to create a painting where he puts these two ladies in this one man's mind. How do you show that, Wilson? How do you come across a situation as Wilson pulls back? You'll see the man and how Oleg tries to put these two women so you know it's in that man's mind. 85,000 minimum retail. I'm not going to charge you anywhere near that, but, it's, but we're talking one of the most amazing Oleg's money can buy. And what I am going to do... Hang on. Let me, let me, no, I'm going to take this one down because I only have five and I'm lucky to have five. This is one of the greatest Oleg's I've ever seen. Ever. Oh, look at him on the back. Look how he improved. Yeah, look, look, look at the linen on the back, the designs he put on it. I mean, Oleg is amazing, but yeah, this is one of the greatest Oleg's. Two six seven five. Eighteen years of doing business with Oleg, and look at that. This is one of the most surprisingly genius paintings I have ever seen Oleg paint. Look at this. You're talking 95,000 retail. Guardian of her dreams. Look how that ball floats there. Look at how, is that guy real? Yeah. Is that, are they a couple? Is that who she's supposed to marry? Or who he's supposed to marry? Isn't there a little house in this piece too? Look at that. Do you see that ball under the chair there, Wilson? That's a sign of good luck and good fortune in Russian. Look at this. Every geometrical shape you can think of. This, look at those bright, vivid colors. This is one of the greatest Oleg's I have ever seen him paint, period. The Three Graces was a $150,000 painting. I sold one, it wasn't 150000 but it was an amazing. This is one of the greatest paintings ever. Every brush stroke with Oleg. Every, look at how the hands. I remember 15 years ago talking with Oleg about how he paints. And I said, okay, you got the idea, then you put the hand there. And Oleg got mad at me. He says, Barry, you ever paint hand? Do you know how many different ways hand can move? How many bones in hand, Barry? How many ways can a finger and hands move? He got mad at me. And they said, I don't know, two? Ugh, you know. But look how that hand is holding off of that. Look at this triangle, this sphere coming out there. 
And look how she doesn't have a care in the world because she's got the guardian of her dreams there. That is stunning. So that is painting number four. And I am going to show you painting number five. And as, I'll meet Joe oh, here, I'll give you that one, yeah. As Wilson said, keep moving the easel back. <laughs> All right, Ashley, I need you to move the easel about eight feet back. Yeah, right there. Yeah, uh, yeah, let's see. Oh, tough mutter. <laughs> or should we just lean it up against it? What do you think? You want down or up, Wilson? That's okay. It's okay. Here. Look at this midnight purple. I mean, this is stunning. It's called Mother and Child. He is telling you a story. A trilogy in this painting. Two six, two six seven two. Look how he treats the canvas. This takes him a very long time. I watched him do it for a small area once about ten years ago, eight years ago. Look at this. This is a trilogy. Angles, circles. Spheres, squares, rectangles, every geometrical shape you can think of. The use of color is beyond brilliance. The way he treats, like it, I, what I'm going to do, Wilson, is I'm going to take this down one level so I can show you something. Wilson, look how he treats the canvas here. Those don't just appear. Those take days. He's got to think in advance. I want something right there. He's got to treat the canvas. Look at this right here. Those maroons and browns. The teals, the greens, sky blue, ocean blue, every color you can think of. This is retail, probably 125,000. I'm not going to charge you anywhere near it, but retail, 125,000, Matt. These are my five Oleg Javettins. They are one, of, and I put on my Facebook page. One of the greatest collections I've ever seen. In many senses, these five paintings have taken him over a year to complete. I was worried because I couldn't get a hold of Oleg for two days. And I'm going, my God, the poor man died. He lives in the desert and it's been hot. And I, I, I saw him, I go, how come you returned my calls? He says, my phone drowned. All right. Folks, I got a great deal for you. And I go easy on the first few. I go easy on everybody. But I have a, a starting price you're not going to believe. Ashley, Patty, Juliet. People, tell me which Oleg you want me to start, because I'm going to auction many of these, and it's not going to be 100,000. It's not going to be 90, 80, 70, 60, or 50,000. It's not going to be 40, 30, or 20,000. I got opening prices on one of the greatest assortment of original oil on canvas ever come together. Which ones do you want to see first? Because I'll tell you what I'm thinking. I am going to move mother and child right here. Ashley. Yeah, but I want also that, that 
that woman there is uh, that's her name amazing woman this is one of the greatest old legs I've ever seen him paint in any time I've ever known him that's an $85,000 retail Look at that. That is stunning. And Ashley, I am going to move this over here. As Robin Williams would say, we don't want to clash. <laughs> now, I got a price in mind on this and this is one of the most amazing paintings you're ever going to get a shot at i know a trip yeah no that didn't hurt look at that amazing woman by oleg javetin eighty-five thousand dollar retail every geometrical shape but try and pull your eyes off of her Rolson yeah come in close closer and right about there you can't stop looking this is a perfect painting a perfect Oleg Javetin now here's what I'm thinking it's not going to even be 10,000 it's not going to be 9,000. It's not going to be 8,000. Look at that. Almost a year's worth of work into this painting by a master graduate of the Surikov in Moscow. Are you ready for this? I hope you're out there because this is as good as Oleg Javetin will ever get. Period. All right. Oh, my goodness. Melvin, if you're out there. We got everything. And, oh, camera too. And I just want to let you know that between Ashley, who worked very hard, and Jack Jackals, and myself, we got almost every back order shipped yesterday, Wilson. It broke me. I mean, I had no idea how much UPS was going to charge me. And I, uh, so they're on their way or should be getting them. So, woo, it got shipped. And it was a hard three, four days of work. I had no idea. Well, anyway, take a look at this. What? Hello, Susan. How is she doing? Tell her Ginger and myself we're going to show up at your house. I can be a good uh, lawn boy. I can mow. I used to have I used to have cards, Wilson. Leaves, weed, snow, see them go. Call Barry Chapel. Yeah. Tell you what. And I hope we have five or six bidders, because this is a perfect Oleg. And I, you know, eighty-five thousand dollar retail. I'm gonna do what? What'd she say? Oh, I'd love to sit inside by the fireplace. All right, I'm going to give someone a deal of a lifetime. This is one of the greatest Oleg's I've ever seen. This hurts because this is, I, if I could read the future, which I can't, but if I could make a solid guess, someday this is going to be an auction paying that brings more money than anybody could ever imagine. 
$4,500 to open, which is cheap. $250 increments once we get the open. That is one of the greatest Oleg Javetins they have ever seen. It's a masterpiece. You're talking about a man that started out in Uzbekistan, by the time he was 16, had virtually finished a college degree in art. And when he was 18, 17 and three quarters, started at the Surikov in Moscow. Matt, camera two. I want to show you a little bit more about who, who Oleg Javetin is. I'm going to run this backwards. That doesn't mean we're going to play it backwards. It means I'm going to start with Oleg 2 first, Matt, and then I'll go to Oleg 1. Here is a little movie I made about Oleg many years ago. So, I, and it, it gives you a Good idea when you listen to Oleg. Watch his manure manurisms. Did I say that right? Okay. And this is... Yeah, Oleg too. This is Oleg in his own words talking about what his art is trying to say and how he has tried to learn art and become the artist he is. Are we ready? Take a look at this. Actually, I live here in the United States about 17 years. Why? Because I was invited to work here. I was invited to work here, and it's a very strange story. People saw my artwork actually on the street when uh, when Soviet Union was strong. It was not allowed any private enterprise. I, I start showing my artworks right in the street. And some entrepreneurs, uh, some American Russian entrepreneurs saw my artwork, they invite me here. They invite me here in, in the United States. And I came here in 1990. I didn't speak any language at all, any English. I had zero dollars in my pocket. And this is why that country is great. I start work and I start have success. My subject matter is very simple, very simple is uh, I paint mostly romantic paintings. I paint appreciations to the good relationship between people. That's it. Most of my paintings, it's a female and male. And male sometimes give her a letter or a flower. She can read the letter or see the beautiful flower. And she can appreciate his honest suggestions to, to her. Very simple. Why I like that? I tell you why. Because I don't want to produce any negativity. It's already so much negativity in our world, in the movies, in the paintings too, in the music. I try to work in that areas, but I don't want to do it anymore. I tell you why. How many years are I going to live? Maybe another 40 years, maybe 30, no more. After all my life I work in, I want to keep some paintings and public, public going to keep the paintings in their collection as something positive. So people, when they look, they have to have pleasure from, from what they look at. They have to have pleasure. Yes, we have negatives, a, lo a lot of negative around us. But I believe if we move our attention to more positive, 
everybody as a society, we're gonna have positive. It's simple as this. Uh, through the deep psychology, we as a humans, a lot of us don't have a simple one nature. Everybody, 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 even simple workmen somewhere in the factory, we all have deep psychological difference, differences even inside us. Each person sometimes can have two or three faces. It doesn't mean that person liar or it doesn't mean that person a bad person. No, no, no. It's a sophistication of our, any human being. Uh, it's a sophistication of our internal psychological depths. It's uh, multidimensional, multidimensional of any human being. Art is uh, one of activities uh, close to the intellectual life of the human beings. Why it's important? I tell you why it's important. Because we are human beings, we are not animals. <laughs> I think the art is the highest expression of human brain in any positions, in literature, music, or visual arts, or Mathematics, mathematics, the high-end mathematics is art too. It's very important because we are human beings. It's just one thing what divides us from rest of animal kingdoms. If tomorrow human beings decided to save that planet, they can save that planet. If tomorrow human beings decided to destroy that planet, they, they can destroy that planet. The difference simple lion or simple monkey or chimpanzee, they cannot do that. Uh, but we are, we are humans, we have tremendous power in our hands. And everything belongs to us, to our decision. Art is just one side of all that intellectual powers. That's why it's important. Human beings can have different pleasures. Uh, psychological pleasures, pleasures from music, uh, physical pleasures through touch, pleasures from food, pleasures from relationship. And art is another area where people can get huge pleasures, tremendous pleasures, especially if you understand. If you can teach yourself how to appreciate art, you can get a lot of, a lot of pleasures from it. You can see some beautiful painted details or expression of, on a face or combination of colors or combination of colors and textures. You can have huge pleasure for, for your mind and for your eyes. Enrichment, Enrichment pleasure, it's just pleasure. It's why uh, uh, Medicis in the past, in the 15th century, they were not stupid, they pay a lot of money to uh, Raphael or to Michelangelo to paint something good, something good. Because we have such a short time live in that world, the longest life is about a hundred years, no more. It's nothing. It's a hundred years. Some people live 50 years, 30. My little brother was killed in a car accident. He died when he was 33. Very young guy. Uh, we have such a short life to spend that, so my, my philosophy, try and enjoy every minute, everything. Try and enjoy every hour. Don't go into any stressful situation. You don't need to. Try and enjoy, try to make your life happy. Try to make your life happy. That's it, this is my philosophy. <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna make a lot of money, it's good. If I don't make a lot of money, I make a little bit of money or no money at all, it doesn't matter, I have to paint. I just cannot do anything else.
Hi folks, we got the dish problem fixed and I want to thank you for your patience. I was showing a little film on Oleg Javetin, master graduate of the Surikov in Moscow. I have five original Oleg Javetins. And this one right here, they all are very special. But when you look at this lady, look into her eyes, Oleg. I mean, Wilson, look into the eyes as painted by Oleg. It's called Amazing Woman, 44 by 32 and a half. All the different geometrical shapes. What's the item number on Amazing Woman? There it is. Yeah, $85,000 retail. And Ashley's telling me that many of the people on DISH didn't get to see, is that correct, all the Oleg's? Yes, all right. This is stunning. This is what Oleg Javetin, master graduate of the Surikov, can do better than anybody on this planet. Ashley, can you... I am going to take Amazing Woman down. Yep. Th this one right here. Folks, if you've ever bought art from me, I thank you. If you're a new customer, I thank you for watching. I've known Oleg since December 4, 2006. I've seen a lot of his works. 2675. This is one of the greatest Oleg's I have ever seen, period. How he has all this movement. Triangles. Look at that. Circles, squares, rectangles. Look at all of what many people would say would clash. It all comes together to create a feeling of harmony. It is called Guardian of Her Dreams. She is laying there completely relaxed and unafraid. He is protecting her. Look at every different geometrical shape he used. Probably 40, 30, 40 different colors that he mixed and used. This piece reminds me a little bit of unto Untitled uh, Man and Woman 1997 that Oleg had selling for uh, 68000 on our brokerage 26 years ago. But this, this one had a face and a face where they weren't expressing their real feelings on man and woman. This one, this man is the guardian of her dreams. One of the most amazing pieces. This is a sign of wealth and good luck, this gold ball. All the different planes he puts in this piece. This, what do I have the retail at this? Uh, 85,000. 85,000. This, how the color in the center builds. It's just one of the greatest paintings ever. I am going to move this one over. Hey, our phone works. Uh, yes. Uh, let me let me go with this one. If you're out there, folks, I wish I had more. I only have five, and I'm lucky to have them. That one beautiful woman, amazing woman, that took Oleg almost a year to paint. I mean, take a look at this. Now look at this. 
Wilson, as they focus in, do you see the man here? There's his nose, there's his lips, there's his ear, there's his eye. He's thinking about these two women. It's called In the Mind. How do you show something like that? A person thinking on canvas, in the mind. That's why you can see the big eye of the person showing you all this activity is going on in this person's mind. What is the atom number on this one, Ashley? 2673. What's the retail on this? 85,000. And all of his sold paintings for 85,000. He sold 10 of his originals himself for over $100,000 each. I mean, this was many years ago. Oleg is such a great, accomplished artist, master graduate of the Surikov. All right, I'm gonna, Ashley, I'm going to move this one over, and then I'm going to show you one of the largest Olegs he has ever painted. Right here. This is huge. Yes, let's put it on the easel to start with. Oh, look at this. Does that look all right, Wilson? What? Put it on the ground. Now pick it up and put it on the... No, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> I know. All of this texturing of the canvas was done by Oleg Jevetin. Every geometrical shape you can think of, 57 by 57 inches by 45 and a half, oil on canvas, mother's child. Look at the child gazing at the mother. All of this texturing takes weeks to do correctly. And you see how he has these lines raised off the canvas. And what Oleg wants you to do is just sit back. Take a look at this because you will see a different story. Something new every time. So when I first met Oleg, I chased him down December 4th, 2006. He was working for a company called Collector's Editions, but they kept lying to me. Snowberry's back in Moscow. He's never here. Yeah, and I, he was in California, and I've been buying and working with him ever since. What was that 17 years? Yeah. Look at that. Look at that texturing, Wilson. Good eye. Look at that. One thing Oleg learned at the Surikov is called Institute of Fine Art, otherwise known as the Surikov is how every inch leads you in to the next three or four to tell you a story that you can build on. Look at this magenta. Everything perfect on this painting. This is a huge painting. All right, Ashley, let's show. I got two more to show, I believe. Maybe three. I only have five. 
And are they picking me up okay on dish now? This one is stunning. Oleg wanted to call this the shrink. This is called tension. And what Oleg is showing you is this lady is meeting with a psychologist or psychiatrist and the lady Oleg is trying to show you the tension that is building. Look at her face. Look how he uses gray across her face to show the tension. This is the psychiatrist or psychologist. Whenever you see a cone on their head in Russia, it's a knowledge and authority of something. And Oleg Javetin, every geometrical shape you can think of. Look at her green eyes just looking right out, Wilson. Very interesting piece. Retail is $85,000. i am not going to charge you anywhere near that. Forty-three and three quarters by thirty-two and a quarter. Beautiful. Look at that. Every geometrical shape. I like how he makes two and a half of her fingers gray. That is genius. He carries that up to the nose, the bridge of the mouth. I mean, he, this is amazing. Oleg is one in a million artist. So Ashley, which ones haven't I shown yet? Did you show the Guardian of Mercury? Not yet. I showed that one, right? Yeah, you showed the Guardian. Okay. Uh, this is it. <laughs> Look how this color, this ball, comes together. This is one of the all-time greatest Oleg's. Guardian of her dreams. Now, look at that, Wilson. She is relaxed, carefree. She knows she is protected. And this man or person or angel is guarding her, guarding her dreams, using every geometrical shape, creating so much motion with that ball coming together. Absolutely stunning. And I want to right here, that's a sign of fortune and good luck in Russian, this ball. And look how the hands are tilted, the fingers. Look at all the texturing Oleg has done. That's brilliant, beyond brilliant. Look, look what Oleg does to the back of some paintings that he wants to always remember. Look at that patterns he put on the back there. Yes. I wish I had more than five, but you're looking at a year's worth of work for Oleg Javetin. He is a master artist, master graduate of the Surikov, one of the hardest art schools. Yes. And who's making the offer? Mr. H, thank you. I'll take that. This is sold. This, Mr. H, don't let that painting out of you. I mean, I'm not saying don't let it out of your sight, but keep a close eye on it, you know. I mean, that is 
a remarkable piece. Thank you, Mr. H. Put in the mind back. This is what Ole can do. Look at all the geometrical shapes. I got to go back and get a, a ge uh, geometry book just to remember all the names of all the shapes. What Oleg challenged himself to do was be able to show inside somebody's mind. Here is this man's eye. There's the man's nose and lips. And the man's ear. And Oleg is saying in his mind, he's thinking about these two ladies. And that's why Oleg called it in the mind. Look at this a textured canvas. I mean, you know how hard that is to come up with a concept like that? And you know, Oleg is very astute. He knows a lot about history. He was talking history with Jack earlier today briefly. But this is like Sigmund Freud, move over. Forget about your concepts. You can talk all you want, Siggy baby. I'm going to paint it and show you how you paint a thought like that. And so this, I hope you're out there. And I want to show uh, the psychologist piece. Oh, I'll tell you what I got to show. Because this next piece is going to sell right now. Uh, Patty, can you hand me while she finishes that sale, the amazing woman? Yes. Yeah, put it on the easel. I'm going to put this over here. Patty, I gave you a chance there. When I said grab amazing woman, you said thank you. Yes, I am. <laughs> this to me is beyond perfect. Look at that. Look at her eyes. Oleg Javetin, 44 by 32 and a half. Oil on canvas. Signed on the front, signed on the back, every geometrical shape. Look how he mixes the colors around her green eyes. Look at the flowers she's holding. Why did he put them there? Why did he make the skylight like that? Look how he made this almost pastel in color, even though it's oil in the corner up there. This is what Oleg Javetin here is one Oleg, and this is from 1997 on Art Brokerage for 68,800, 26 years ago. But this painting. Which one are they interested in? What's that? On the mind, I can't do that. Who is it making the offer? Oh, Paul, Paul. Mm. And I appreciate people taking the time. I mean, Paul's talking about in the mind's eye, right? In the mind. 
in the mind. All right. Oh. I will show the mother and child. Hang on, give me one second. I want to make sure I got mother and child because I sold one, so I have four here. Uh, we started with five. And tell Paul, Paul, I just need a minute on that. I need a minute to think about that. Which one do they want to see? Okay. This is one of the largest Oleg's I have ever. It's not one of the largest because I've had some huge Oleg's. Yeah. The three graces and other ones. But let's look at this. Now, he has used every geometrical shape you can think of. Oleg has used a hard technique to look at that. It looks like he enameled it. He didn't, but he's creating a backdrop there. Then you look at the mother's eyes, every color you can think of. He textures the painting here. He raises the reds and golds off the canvas. He is creating a feeling, a sense, mother and child. Mother's child. Look at that. And folks, what you're going to see, whoever gets this, is you're going to hang this and you are going to look at it and see something different every time. I mean, it is, say which one now? Okay. Ashley, let's actually put this up for a second. I just want to, yeah, because Wilson, I want them to see that whoever gets this, every time you look at this, if this is in your living room and hanging high, you are going to see something different every time. Look at all the texturing he did there. Look at the curly, the curls in the child's hair. I mean, every geometrical shape you can think of. And I like the piece about sitting next to a psychiatrist. What's the name of that one? Tension. Tension. Look at that. Isn't this amazing? Yeah. This... See, I don't understand why this isn't a million dollar Oleg. I think there's once, once in a, a billion years, a guy like Oleg Javetin, born in Uzbekistan, graduates college at 16 or 17 with a degree in art, takes a year, gets everything together, gets accepted at 17 and a half or 18 to the Surikov in Moscow the toughest art college on the planet, one of them, and paints like this. So every time you look at it, you're going to see something and feel something different. It's so cool. All right, let's take this one down. And nobody's bought Amazing Woman yet? Let's put the shrink back up. That's what its name is tension. But Oleg said this is what 
the lady might feel like if she is meeting with a psychologist or a psychiatrist. Look at this lady. Look at her eyes. Look how he puts the gray across the face and across two and a half of the fingers. This is the psychiatrist, psychologist. Those hats in Russian art means uh, thinker, you know, of great knowledge. And look at those eyes. I like how those fingers, two and a half of them are gray. Half of her face is gray. He is trying to show the tension that you might feel or this lady is feeling as she goes to a psychologist, psychiatrist. It's utterly brilliant. This is, what's the atom number on this? Two six seven six. Look at this, eighty five thousand retail. Now let me put my glasses on. Yeah, eighty five thousand. You are talking about one of the greatest Oleg's ever. On uh, I can't do that, but who do you have online? Hang on, let me, I'll tell you what, I can't take that. I thank them for that offer. Ashley put up amazing woman. <laughs> I want to show you something, look at this. This is the showpiece of the year, I mean, this will grow on you. No. Who made you that offer? Chopper, oh, thank you, Chopper. I can't, but what I can do, ah. Oh. oh, this is stunning. Mm. Me for an off air price. This is. You're looking at one of the all-time greatest. What do we have the retail at? Eighty-five thousand. Yeah, it's not going to be fifteen thousand. It should be. It should be a lot more. But call me. I'll give you an off-the-air price. I have four Oligs left. And Ashley, in the mind, what's the, where, where is he? What do I want you to do? I want you to create a world economic system that has some of the beauty and grace of Adam Smith's Wealth of Nations without the brutality of Keynesian destructionism. Tell you what, Ashley, oh folks, and Melvin, we got a pallet out to you. It's like a moving truck. It's going to pull up at Melvin's house. He's going to go, I need a new house. Yeah. I haven't heard from Melvin tonight. I would have never guessed. <laughs> I I didn't, I didn't know what that meant. Uh, there's a lot of, well, anyway, tell you what, I got a price on this in mind. This is a showstopper, folks. You could wait, Oleg took over a year painting this. That's perfect.
It is an old league that I don't understand why it's not worth a half a million already. It's one of the most great, greatest. No, it's not. But, I mean, I have seen, like I said, Oleg sold over 12 paintings himself for $100,000 each. And I got a price in mind, Ashley. And they're going to go, I got to own it at that price. Call me up. I, I, I don't know if I have the energy to do my... Crushed skin Spock mind melt. You saw me the other night. I sold a painting doing that, but Wilson, that took everything out of me. And we got a letter from somebody in Cleveland said you broke my darn TV. Yeah. I got a price. All right, folks, this is the winner of winners. Oh, that is a perfect painting. This is too cheap. If it doesn't sell quick, Ashley, I'm going to take this price down. And run with this painting. This is this is unbelievable. Look at the crown he made her. It's not a crown on top of her head. Go back up, Wilson. Using her arm to form what looks like a crown. It's just brilliant. I'll tell you what. This is too cheap. Five thousand dollars to open. That's way too cheap. Five thousand to open. Two hundred and fifty dollar increments. Don't miss out on this. This is a perfect Oleg. Oleg Javetin. He, master graduate of the Surikov, the Russian Academy, uh, the Moscow Academy of Fine Art. This one up here. Well, I got it to 5000 to open. Um, Mr. L, I am giving you a price that I, I shouldn't. I mean, this painting took Oleg a year to complete. This is one of the greatest Oleg Javetins I've ever seen. It is one of the most valuable Oleg's I've ever seen. I've known Oleg since December 4th, 2006. <laughs> Folks, whoever gets this, this is a top notch of Russian Romanticism and uh, modern Russian art. I mean, Oleg Javetin is as good as it gets. Oh, that's a perfect painting. If you know a psychiatrist or psychologist, that other one, uh, Tension is a great painting too. And no, all right. Ashley, did you sell in the mind's eye yet in mind? Or? Okay, well. Say what now? Here's what I want to do because this. Oh, that's too cool. 
You know, there are paintings, and this is one of them. I don't mind holding on till. But here's what I'm going to do. This is the one that Oleg literally. And Oleg is a rather even keel guy. Certain things gets gets him a little upset. Mainly, uh, let's leave it right here for a while. Is that in the right light, Wilson? Like that. Lean it back. All right. I want it to lean back. All right. Folks, this is a showstopper. 57 inches. Correct me if I'm wrong, Wilson, but 60 inches is 5 feet. Boy, I'm sharp, aren't I? <laughs> uh -huh. By 45 and a half. Now, folks, this painting will change before your eyes. Not literally, but you will see something different. Something absolutely amazing. From the coloring down here, where it's raised, look how far off the canvas this comes right here, Wilson. Look how far off. He raises it up. He textures it in here. Certain parts, it almost goes in. It's almost in -cuse. I mean, he has done everything he knows how to do. This is like the ultimate Oleg. And he was talking about this painting, trying to explain how, what concepts of art history he used to put this off pink, red, golden yellow right there, and why he did it, and how that little, those little raised lines took him days of thinking about it. This is a amazing Oleg. Listening to Oleg talk about this painting, Wilson, it was like that movie, Johnny Cash, when Sam Phillips said, if you got hit by a car and were laying out in that gutter and you had time to sing one song, only one song, to tell God and everybody else what you thought about your experience on earth, you'd sing that same Jimmy Davis song or would you say, sing something real, something that shows people real inspiration. This right here could be Oleg's painting if he got hit by a car and was laying in the ditch and he could only paint one painting. This you'll see different things every time you look at it. I was going to put this up and take no less than 12500 for it. Because this, and I'm talking Barry Chapel prices. I mean, what do I have? I think the retail on this was over a hundred thousand, hundred and twenty-five thousand. This is as good as it gets times two. But I got a price in mind. If you are interested, one of the largest, greatest stories. It's a trilogy that Oleg is showing you here. Mother's child. I got a price. Oh, that's something. All right, call me, folks. And where do we stop? Uh, did we sell Amazing Woman? But someone's thinking about that. Or no. And if Melvin's out there, you you want Mother's Child. Or Mr. W. Or Mr. E. And 
what I am going to do is move the shrink over here. It's not the shrink, but that's what Oleg wanted to name it. All right. Take a look. And where's the other one? On the other side, the mind's eye. Yeah, take that away because, yeah, because I want everybody just to see this. All right, folks. First of all, I want to thank you. You know, I'm in my 33rd year on TV. I quit a tenured teaching gig to start this, and I am so grateful. When I quit at Wilson, I was telling uh, Jennifer, my wife at the time, if I can get six months out of this. And we got, so far I've gotten 32 years in the book. I'm in year 33. That's a painting. What's the item number on this? Mother's Child. 2672. Should not be sold for less. I wasn't going to take a penny less than 12 grand, but I am now. I have a number in my mind. Call me. Melvin, call me. This is the showstopper of showstoppers. You will see something new, something different, something that Oleg has thought about and rethought about in every inch of the painting. Yeah, when I saw it, I was not going to take a penny less than 12000 but I will right now. Call me up. Make me some offers. Uh oh, I'm down to 30 minutes, 35. I got a number. Should I be bold? Patty, and throw a number to start an auction or no? I mean, I didn't want to take anything. This is huge. This is a trilogy painted by Oli. You're going to see something different every time you look at it. It's not going to be 12. It's not going to be 11. It's not going to be 10. It's not even going to be 9. Give me a call. I'm one of the most amazing Oligs you're ever going to see. I knew Kip when I was 14 and 15. Really? Yeah, we used to fly RC airplanes, remote control. All right, I'll tell you what. I got to move some art, folks. I'm trying to be patient for everybody. I got to go back to the amazing woman. And did, they, did he work out the deal on this one? All right, let's start with the um, which one, which who's thinking about the most? What's because something all right, where were we at on this one and this one? Where, where were we at? Can he come up 500? If he can come up 500, he's got it on that one. Okay. We're not talking, we're talking about, yeah, now. 
All right, folks. I'm going to move this one right here for right now. That could be a wall to your house. Hand me the amazing woman. Folks, I've had a lot of people talking about this one. That's as good as it's ever going to get. Oleg takes a long It's not that it takes him a long time. He thinks about every brush stroke. He's, one of them, he's got the discipline of Michelangelo. I mean, he's seeing through everything. He's trying to think three brush strokes ahead. This is the amazing woman. Did I give a price on this? Oh, folks, I don't want to get anybody mad at me, but I'm running out of time. First person that says 5000 I will sell it to you. Not even going to auction it. $5,000, that is an $85,000. This is stunning. First one that calls up, it's going to be yours. That's way too cheap. That is a perfect painting. I've been looking at it going, Perry, you should keep it. I don't compete with my customers. The great guy, Bob Hallam, taught me that 33 years ago. Never compete with your customers. That's a perfect painting. Every geometrical shape you can think of Amazing woman. Look how he's textured part of it. Everything. Perfect. I can feel it. I am sending out a psychic mind melt, Wilson. Don't show it, because last time I showed it, people in Cleveland blamed me for breaking the television set. No, I'm not going to. Oh, that is a perfect painting. Folks, if you want something, in my humble opinion, I don't understand. I personally believe that Oleg Javetin, a man that has sold paintings for over a quarter of a million dollars, a man that uh, would take $250,000 uh, charge two fifty dollars for him, and a lady who graduated a couple years after him, he sells artwork in Moscow. He sells it in America. First person that says yes to 5,000. Melvin, if you're out there, get online. Mr. W, get online. This is a showstopper. This is a perfect painting. I can't see the future. I wish I could. I'm sure everybody does. But I can certainly see how this painting is worth far more than 5000 And as time goes by, well, it's already sold around the world. This is a very beautiful painting. At five grand, this should be boom gone. everything you could ever want. He hand mixed every single one of those colors. He thought about it, thought about it. 
everything he learned about color theory, brush stroke, geometrical shapes, which he specializes in, everything he learned at the Surikov, where he got his master's degree. He put in every inch of this painting. Any interest, Ashley? Tell you what, Matt, I want to show part one now. Hi, Barry Chapel coming to you live. From Hollywood, California, home of Primetime Shopping Networks Studio. Thank you for watching. This is the second half that I should have done first, but I like to play it second of Oleg Javetin. Listen to him. This is a genius artist, one in a million. Take a look at this. <laughs> My name is Oleg Zhvetin. I was born in the former Soviet Union. I was born in a small town close to Tashkent city. Tashkent is a pretty big city in Central Asia. It used to be part of Soviet Empire. But when I was grow up, I never knew all of, all of that stuff. I just grew up. When I was grow up, uh, I don't know the difference between socialism or communism or capitalism or anything else, all that political crap. I just grew up as a little boy, that's it. I, I just grew up, I love uh, to see flowers, nature, play Indians, actually we play American Indians. <laughs> My earliest memories, I just uh, love to draw. I, I draw on the furniture, on the walls, uh, on the paper. If I have a piece of paper, I, I just draw. My family, we have three kids. I used to have sister older than me and brother um, younger than me. My father is a simple engineer. Actually, he was chief engineer in the furniture factory. And uh, we have simple life. I'm thanks, thankful to my parents because they was educated, actually behind their, their limits, behind what they need to know in their lives. We have a great library, great library. So I, I wrote a lot. I wrote a lot of American artists, American writers too. And I, I was just a simple boy, just read a little bit. Uh, the, the important, probably, we don't have much TV. That time, Soviet Union, Russia at the time, we had just three channels which controlled by government. And we have just a simple corny movies, probably not much news because they don't show news at all. Here in the United States, uh, people always stressful. Why? Because they always see the horrible news. Somebody killed here, somebody uh, has a drug overdose, somebody got a uh, car accident, terrorism here, terrorism here. Always stressful news. Back in Soviet times, no, no, no. Even if Russia has some kind of trouble like this, they never show on TV. They never show on TV. They, they always show positive news. Like, let's say, uh, that farmer got thousands uh, more cows, and that's it. <laughs> the whole news like this. <laughs> If I couldn't paint, uh, I have to make somehow my living. I don't know. I would be probably homeless. But, uh, I cannot do anything else. I cannot do anything. Uh, my early age, when I was like 17 years old, and I was in uh, art school, but I cannot make any money from my art. My father was chief engineer in furniture factory, so 
One time I came to him and I tell to him, look, I, I have to make some extra money for my clothes, for my girlfriends. For... He said, okay, you can go in my factory and work as a simple blue collar fa factory workman. You can make maybe about 200, 300 bucks a month. And I try did that. I, I go to the factory and work about three months. And it was so hard and it's, uh, I don't want to do that anymore. It's not because it's hard labor. Uh, I'm not afraid of hard labor. It's uh, what uh, stopped me to do it anything. I start to understand I don't like it. I just don't like it. I start to understand I have to stick what I like. What I, I like to paint and that's it. I'm going gonna, I, I gonna to be an artist. But I joined the Surikov Art Institute called Vasily Surikov Art Institute when I was um, um, 20 or 21. It's very, very difficult school to get into. Why? I tell you why. Because in Soviet times, to join that school, a lot of, a lot of competition to join that school. Why? Because it's, uh, let's say, just, let's say, take huge megapolis like Moscow. 10 million people live in Moscow. And uh, in Moscow, we have probably two or three schools high end like this, no more. And 200 million people in the country. And let's say how many thousands of artists who want to join and to be an artist and get that high, uh, high end excellent education. Thousands of people. So when you go to there, you, you have to show your artworks. You have to show your skills, your education, and you have to pass it through examination. So when you compete, uh, you, you, you have to take some tests in art, in, in uh, drawings, in composition, in paint, in uh, art history, in uh, language, in a uh, little bit in philosophy. And every test, you have, you have to have excellent grades. If you don't have excellent grades, you just lose. That's it, because school has to choose uh, the, the most excellent person to study. Uh, you have to show real paintings, not photographs, not for portfolio, real paintings. Uh, so I, I, I take my paintings, I put them in a train, put myself in a train, travel three days. It's a big, Russia, a very big country. So from south to the Moscow, I travel about three days in a train, uh, take some taxis, so show the paintings real paintings to the persons who are reliable, who make making decisions. So they can allow it to put you compete. A lot of guys show the paintings, it doesn't matter. They, they can see the paintings and they say, no, no, we cannot accept you. We cannot accept you even to try compete. So first step, you have to show the paintings and they can see the paintings and probably they can see some potential inside. Uh, they can say, yes, we can allow you to start competition. In Russia, in Soviet times, artists cannot paint even human being or any cityscape or landscape or any nature. It was against uh, religious rules. Simply, I can have consequences. For example, if I paint something like I paint now in Russia, back in Russia, I could be arrested. It's simple as this. Why? Because I don't paint some stupid portraits of some proletarian guys or some party propaganda. Uh, what they actually tell you to paint. A KGB guy come to you and say, okay, you have to paint here Lenin or here some Karl Marx and here some revolutionary guards or whatever. And uh, of course, a lot of people say, yeah, yeah, I paint it. And they paint, they got their salary, and that's it. But if you don't do it, you don't paint, you paint something else, you, it, very simple. They can arrest you, they can abuse you in jail, torture. It's very simple like this. Can spend, let's say, 10, 7 years just for nothing, for saying something, or paint some paintings or create some music what doesn't suit to the music of 
communistic taste. I just have to change my situation around me so I don't want to go to prison. Why? Because I want to paint certain paintings. It's as simple as this. So I moved to the United States. And amazingly, I never was arrested for my paintings. <laughs> Even more, I was appreciated. Here, public start like my paintings. Hi, folks. Barry Chapel back with you. I finished 32 years of live TV in my 33rd. I sold Peter and Max. Thomas Kincaid's, I, Leroy Neiman's, Kandensky, Krasniansky, Will Barnett's. I've sold a lot of different artists. One of the greatest artists I've ever met is right here, Oleg Javetin. I have three Olegs left. Two of them are absolutely monumental. The third one's a great painting. But this one right here, Amazing woman. This is a perfect painting. It could not have been done any better. Using only geometrical shapes. You know all about this lady. You are going to figure her out. when She is going to tell you more and more and more about her self every time you look at her. That's what art is supposed to do. And that's what a master graduate of the Moscow Institute of Fine Art, otherwise known as the Surikov, one of the hardest art colleges on the planet, only can show you. This is an $85,000 or more original, and only knows that because he sold, one year he sold 12 himself, no brokers, no agents, over $100,000 each. I'm showing you a great one. Call Ashley or Patty. We got a great price on this one. I don't know if Melvin or Mr. W, this could be the takedown of the year. Look at this. Look at this. Mother's child. Every different hard concept about Russian art was put into this painting. The story is evolving and changing. I think we have this uh, as 125,000. This should be a quarter of a million dollar painting. Oleg, I mean, this is as good as it gets. This is what Oleg has spent his entire lifetime to create. He spent part of, you know, these five paintings he spent a year on. Add different parts, every, uh, you know, different looks on them. This, I got a great price on. Melvin, if you're out there, Mr. W, Mr. C, call me. This is a monumental takedown. This will make your house, and this is stunning. And then I have... Uh, the one with the, uh, tension. Yes, where Oleg is trying to show the reaction that maybe if you could paint it and show emotion, which is what a great painter can do. And that's what Oleg is showing you with this one. The tension being created between the psychiatrist and the patient. Look at that. Look how it's affecting her. Part of her face is gray. Two and a half of her five fingers are gray. The thinker cap of an uh, intellectual thinker. Look at those eyes. Tension. Oil on Linen by Oleg Shvetin. What's the item number on tension? Say what? 
2676. Look how he's doing it. That is mind numbing. It's like when Grant painted American Gothic. I mean, you're looking at one of the greatest artists I've ever met. There's no book you read. How do I show the tension between a psychiatrist and a patient in a painting? Oleg just did. Using color and geometrical shapes. So folks, I have these three paintings left. I only have 13 minutes left. All three of them are stunning. And the single biggest, they all are. But Mother's Child is amazing. But this one right here, Ashley, I can feel it. Someone's going to call right now. Amazing woman right there by Oleg Javetin. Don't let that one slip away. That's as good as it gets. Please call us. 855-474-6778. Every now and then I catch one of some of these other art shows. Some are good, most of them. I put up some unbelievable retail. That's very believable. I know all, I know his work. He sold for collector's editions. He sold on art brokerage. He sold in Russian auction houses. You know, Russia and China, there's all this talk about a new non-Petro, non-U.S. currency. Well, if the Russians and the Chinese are on it, Wilson, don't you think you might want some Russian art? But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, call me on this. Who was thinking about this? Who, who uh, what was the customer's name? Mr. L. Mr. L, give me a call. I give you first dibs. Melvin, you got to get mother and child. I will lower the price for Melvin. For people that are interested, and I thank you. Mr. L, this whoever this is a once in a once in a while a great while a painting like this comes along and it's perfect patty has seen oleg at work he's very analytical every inch he's looking at 12 different ways That's stunning. Call me, folks. Oh. Hey. Any what? Yes, I do. Give me a second and I will get it out there. Yes, but before I do that, on this one? And who is it? Mr. W? And where is he at? I'll tell you what I can do. And tell him this is a perfect painting. He, he's. What?
Well, somebody, I'll tell you what. I'm going to drop this down. This is the best I can do, 4,500. This is so remarkable. It's a perfect painting. I already regretted that that came out of my mouth. Look how he shows shadows there. This is the amazing woman. And if Melvin's out there, Melvin needs to own mother's child. Is Melvin watching? Well, Melvin, I want to show you a trilogy. What? Give me one second. Melvin, take a look at this. This is a trilogy. This is one of the greatest Oleg's ever painted. Anybody that's watching, this is 57 by 45 and a half. This is a trilogy. It's called Mother's Child. It's oil on canvas. Oleg painted this in a way that you're going to hang this and you're going to see something different every time. He has textured the canvas. He has inlaid, ingrained, all kinds. And I wasn't going to take less than 12000 but Melvin or anybody, I got a special price for you. I am down to six minutes. Is Melvin curious? Did Melvin say, Ashley, what is my special berry price? I already told him that. Yeah. And you let me? What did I tell him the price? <laughs> what, what was that price again? Melvin on that? I love Melvin. If he says yes, I'll sell it to him. But he's got to sell yes quick because this is a trilogy. All right, he's a doctor. All right. And is Melvin thinking about that at that price? I'm going to ask him right now. He should snatch that because I wanted 12 grand. All right, Mr. Doctor, sir. This is what Oleg wanted to paint the tension between a patient, this lady, and a psychiatrist, psychologist. And the way Oleg shows the tension is this gray shadow, lipstick is on, but you see this gray shadow coming over the face. Two and a half of her fingers are gray. The way that blank look of green eyes, the symbol for thought and thinking, the, the psychiatrist right here, this is pretty interesting, I believe. And I, you know, when someone asks, I'm serious, when you ask, show me a way to show the tension between a psychiatrist and a patient, only a guy like Oleg using boxes, planes, circles, squares, triangles, and coloring the face that way could make it happen. That's stunning.
Please tell Melvin we worked day and night. We got everything out for Melvin. Everything's on its way to Melvin. Everything's on the way to everybody. Last four days have been a big shipping day. This is stunning, and Melvin, don't let mother's child get away from you. On this, okay, Ashley, I'm walking over there. Thank you, Ashley, but I'm running out of time. I think two of these are gone. Ashley's working on some sales, which Melvin, the trilogy. There was Star Wars, Wilson. Then there was like the New Frontier. I haven't seen any of them. I am not a big Star Wars fan. On which one? Done. Now, I got three minutes left. Four, three and a half. This is a trilogy. Once in a while, a great while, Oleg or any artist comes up with something. You will see something different every time you look at this. There are meanings within meanings in this painting. There are Russian superstitions, Russian blessings. There are so many things happening in this 57 by 45 and a half. And I know Melvin was worried that some of it, and it's, it's, it's my fault. Uh, things should have been shipped quicker. And Ashley and Jack and me got on it, and we got so much out yesterday or the last four days. So, and we've got a whole new way of getting this stuff done so fast. So I apologize, and I'm trying to make it up to everybody and anybody I can. I only got a minute and a half left. Is that what you're telling me? One minute. Melvin, work me a deal on this. You will not regret it. I, can all, I can't guarantee. Yes, I, this is as good as Ole gets. And if it doesn't sell, it's all right. Because if I sold everything and I have one left, this trilogy of a painting, Mother's Child, 40, 57 by 45 and a half? Oh, my goodness. And I want to thank you. I'm going to be back next week. I'm working on a big coin deal. And you guys just hang out there. It is hot everywhere in the country. Take care of yourselves. It is hot. Is it hot, It's so hot. I fried an egg on the way in. But anyway, I, hey, we love you. I'll see you next week. Thank you very much for watching me. Bye-bye and be good. Be careful.